Hello and welcome back. This is part two of our video related to topic eight. And what we're doing, I guess for the rest of this video, is just a couple of examples. These examples are available for you in your course notes. Of course, you're going to try them out independently to make sure you get the same answers as I do. Follow along during your course notes. Also, don't forget to do the homework because it's crucial practice so that you can rock that test. Okay, let's look at example one. Let's see what do we have. It looks like something like a multi-story building. I see a height that's measured from ground level to the highest ceiling of 14.2 meters, or as it's shown here in millimeters, 14,200. There is a length of 8.8 .8 meters, or 8,800 millimeters, and uh, you're being asked to figure out the maximum area of unprotected openings that the code permits for this part three building if the limiting distance to this building is 4,600 millimeters or 4.6 meters. So you're being given that the limiting distance is 4.6 meters. It's given to you. You don't have to figure that out. And you're given the height and the length. So basically right now, here's a situation you're for the this real estate company that's developing this building. They're looking to build it. Doesn't exist yet. And they need to figure out um, how many windows are they going to be allowed to put into this building? Which can be important, right? It doesn't really matter, say, if it's a warehouse building. But if it's supposed to be a prime office building, maybe you want lots of windows. If it's supposed to be uh, like a, a mall, or something similar, you want lots of windows, right? You want people from the outside to see in, and maybe you want people from the inside to see out, okay? So that becomes important. You're also being told that this building is unsprinklered and it's office occupancy. So let's do it, okay? So what are we gonna do, first of all? I think uh, we're gonna find the correct table to use for this. We know it's office and unsprinklered, so that means group D, and therefore out of those four tables, we're using 3.2.3.1B. B is in Bob, as shown on the screen. Very well. Limiting distance. It's given to you. 4.6 meters. You don't have to figure it out. That means, if you remember my tip, along the top, which column are we going to use? We're going to use 4 because for limiting distances you always round down, right? And if you're not sure where I came up with that tip of rounding down, go to part one. Now how about the area of this exposed face? Remember the area is H times L, height times length? Go to part one to figure out the definition for height and length. So in this case it's 14.2 times 8.8, .8, that's 124.96 meters squared. So that means, because we always go to the nearest higher area, it's 150 meters squared row in the table. So, let's see what else. Ah, the ratio, H over L or L over H. We're going to use H over L. Why are we using H over L and not L over H? If you remember, in part one, you have to do both and take the larger one of the two. So in this case, we get 1.61. Out of the three ratios that we're allowed to take, we take the nearest one, which is less than 3 to 1. So that 1.61, you read as 1.61 to 1. Because it's less than 3 to 1, that's the row you're using. Great. So then we go to the table, and in that table, we basically play our game of uh, battleship. We find the correct column for that limiting distance, we find the correct row, 150 square meters, and then within that we use the correct row for the ratio less than 3 to 1. Do you see the number that comes from that uh, intersection? 13? Great. So 13 is the percentage area. That's what the inside of that table is. It's the percentage of that, um, that face that's allowed to be unprotected. 13% of that face is allowed to be unprotected. I mean, it could just be holes for all the building code says for protection purposes. So the maximum area that's allowed to be unprotected, how do we figure that out? 
we know the whole area, we know the percentage, how do we figure out the max, the unprotected area? We multiply the percentage by the area. So 13% of 124.96 square meters is 16.24 square meters. This is a good place for me to tell you a what could be a possible mistake. Sometimes if you're rushing, and you never must rush in this course, you might multiply 13% by 150 square meters, which is the row you used. No, you want the actual area, okay? All right, so now that we know how much area is allowed to be unprotected, then we go to the second table we learned about, 3.2.3.7, introduced in part one of the video, which basically tells you the minimum construction requirement for that exposed face, okay? So if we go to that table by using 13%, what you'll find, and go to that table right now, table 3.2.3.7, you'll find that then the exposed building face, based on 13%, it falls in a range, it will give you that the fire resistance rating shall be not less than one hour with non-combustible cladding. Okay? So that means that 87% of this exposed face must have this minimum level of protection. Now, you want a tip? Go find then what the construction must also be. It's shown in that table too. Don't just limit yourself to just what the fire resistance rating and what cladding has to be. You must also list what the structure, what the construction must be. Okay? It's all there in 3.2.3.7. Good. Now, uh, there's more examples in your homework. Okay, homework three is a good place to start. Do it. Do it. It's good practice. That way, when it comes to your test, you're going to rock it. Okay? But there's other information that I also want to pass on to you. And that is, um, you can also use this table, or these four tables that we looked at, B, C, D, and E, kind of backwards. And what I mean by that is that you can actually, given the amount of unprotected area, you could work backwards to figure out what the limiting distance could be. Okay, and that's by manipulating the tables themselves. So what we're going to do with example two is kind of see how to use this backwards method. What we have in example number two, which is also in your course notes, is a building. And you're told that the area of the exposed building face for this building is 250 square meters and that the ratio was found to be less than 3 to 1. Okay, so that gives you the left hand side of that table. What you're being asked is what must be the limiting distance, right, the distance of the property line if you're allowed to have 39 square meters of windows, right, basically 39 square meters of unprotected area. Let's do it. So what we have here is, first of all, we have to figure out what that percentage of unprotected area is, because that's what's in the table, right? So 39 divided by 250 gives you 15.6%. That's the percentage. Now we have to go to the appropriate table. We go to this table, because we know it's the occupancy, because it's an office, okay? And we're being told that the uh, limiting distance that basically we have to find is 6. How did we find that? Well, no, oh, sorry, I'm just going to go back here. What we found basically is that we have 250 square meters right here. We know that the row we're looking at is less than 3 to run 1, so it's right here, this row here, right? So you know we have to look at this row. We also know that we're looking at 15.6% so either we're looking at this or we're looking at that in terms of percentage. So if I get 13%, is that good to go up? Well, no, because you're allowed up to 15.6. 13 is less than that. So you go up to 16, and going up to there, you get a limiting distance of 6, right? This 16 came from right here, okay? All right. Now, there's some more information here on these items. Check them out in the building code, please. I'm listing them here. They're also listed in your 
uh, course notes and that is information related on how to decrease the amount of unprotected openings and increase the amount of unprotected openings. In some cases the building code will allow you to have unlimited unprotected openings. Yeah, for real. Uh, also information related to glass and aluminum curtain walls and then special considerations related to sp unsprinklered buildings. Okay. You know what that symbol means right in the top right corner of your screen right now? Check it out in your building codes. That's why they're also listed in your course notes. All right. So uh, here is another example for you. I believe, sorry, I believe this example actually might be one of the ones in your course notes. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because this here is a very plain vanilla example, right? Every building you see here is a box, a very simple four-sided box, every angle is 90 degrees. Like a Walmart, if you will, right? A simple box type building. But what happens when you have more realistic buildings where the face is not just straight, where the building is not simply a box? How do you deal with that? Well, that's what we're going to deal with, okay? So what if you have a building that kind of looks like this, right? where the sides of that building are not just straight lines, but they're kind of indented, right? What if that building, like you see here, is not a, it's at an angle to the property lines? What if you have a funky building and the property lines are all weird? What if you have a building like the one on the right, where a side is curved, right? What do you do with that? Well, there is this portion of the building code, which you're going to look up, of course, 3.2.3.1 sorry let me reread that because I read it incorrectly 3.2.3.2.1 okay and what it basically says is that you have to look at the amount of for the area to look at for that face you have to look at the total exterior wall facing in one direction on any side of the building okay so check it out please also uh, related to irregular um, uh, building faces, um, if you check out this portion of the building code, uh, you also have to make sure that it gives you, that you take out the information related to it in here. Okay, so it, you, I, I basically want you to review this information in the building code. Okay, also uh, I'm providing you right in your course notes like I do here, what happens whenever you're dealing with the regular building faces? Uh, do you look at the limiting distance that goes to the nearest face to the limit to the property line? Or do you go to the furthest face to the property line? Which one do you use? Okay. Well, what the building code basically is saying is that you want to go to the nearest face. You basically want to pretend if you're looking at this side of the building, you want to look at this area, this area, this area, this area, because it all faces this property line as if it were all projected like onto a screen, onto a mirror at the nearest face, okay? Because that's the most um, conservative way of doing it, right? If you assume that all those faces are closer to the property line, it's more conservative, okay? And that's the same whenever you have something that's at an angle. You basically take the nearest point to that property line under consideration and you project that area along this face, okay, that is at the nearest point to the property line. And that's the same thing then for the next face for along the next property line. So what happens, as you can see here, you might get faces like this that are kind of double counted, right? This face was used both as a projection here for this property line and this face is now used here as a projection for this property line. Okay, I'm just making you aware of this because we won't try it but if you get in this business you'll be exposed to it. Okay, next. What happens um, oh, sorry what happens if you have a building like this? Okay, you have a building that's irregular and what we learned is that uh, if it's irregular you basically project all the faces facing that property line at the nearest point. Right? Make sense? 
So you, it's as if all of these vertical faces are actually all along this face. That's what we learned. However, the building code says something interesting. If you know ahead of time that there are going to be unprotected openings along a specific face. Okay, and that's what this portion of the building code says. It says that you can move back Okay, you can move back that limiting distance and that's only if you know that there's going to be an unprotected opening somewhere. You can actually move back that limiting distance to that nearest face. Okay, but you need to calculate both. Okay, because you always have to find what you're being asked for. Okay, but the building code allows you to do that under here. Make sure you go read when and how that can be used. Okay, all right. That's all I really want to say as I come up on the 15 minute mark. You're now able to do uh, homework three and four. Okay, this should read worksheet, instead of worksheet four, it should read homework four. Homework four looks like this. It's an irregular face, right? It's not a box, and there are unprotected openings on all faces. And you have to figure out what the limiting distances are maybe, or what the percentage of unprotected openings are do that, right? You want to do homework four. It's available for you on Brightspace, including the solution. But here's the important thing, okay? Typically, uh, there's been at least a question on the test that is very similar to homework three and four, okay? So if you're comfortable with doing it, and you have to do it, uh, then you'll be okay with the test. I'm not saying you're definitely going to rock it, but I'm giving you the best chance of rocking the test is by making sure that you're comfortable with doing homework three and four, okay? That you know how to do it. So do it, you know, maybe after you review this video, okay? Homework three and four. Uh, that's really it. Uh, thank you so much. You stuck around with me for 17 minutes and counting. I really appreciate it. Before I forget, if you haven't already, download these course notes to your device of choice. Don't just access them through Brightspace, please. Make sure they're on your laptop. If you want to print them out, that's okay, but at least make sure they're saved to your laptop. I've talked too much. I'm blabbing too much. I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much, and I'll see you for the next topic. Bye-bye.